Hey, guess what? It's time for more Tech Talk. Only this time it's number 33. Remember that. I'm keeping track now. It's 33. And boy, have we got stuff to talk about tonight. I mean, not only have we been busy talking to a lot of people, so we got lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, but George, you got some cool stuff. We're going to be talking about touch screens and and adapters, and we've got we're going to have a good talk about. Do you really need to go remote? Plus, all your questions. That's right. All right. So stay tuned. Tech Talk is coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B.S. Perfect Deck. sync there. Talk. 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 You know how much I have to jump the gun for that to be in sync? I have to jump it. Like, you're literally saying the last thing, and I'm saying the next thing to get them to sync. It's really bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad I'm, it worked. I'm, I, think, I think we got it down now, though. Anyway. <laughs> We're so getting there. Time for Tech Talk, and I've got lots of stuff to talk about tonight, but... First off, we have to get this off our chest. This is what George and I do. And we're really busy right now because <laughs> everybody has to have a freaking voiceover. We've only been telling you for the last nine years, belting it down your throats. And all of a sudden, exactly. it's like, oh, now I have to have one. Like oh, it was your idea. I, yeah, I know. I know. A lot of people have been avoiding it as long as humanly possible. And they're getting caught and it's not comfortable for a lot of people right now. So yeah, that's what we're here for. We're trying to take the hands of the scared and the timid and the uninitiated and walk them into the home studio life. Yep. It, and it's not that hard, but if you, if you want proper instruction, because that's really what it takes, because you know, you can take acting classes and voice acting classes and all this other stuff. They don't teach you the tech. They just teach you how to be an actor, which by the way, is the most important thing when you're a voice actor is you're a voice it's actor. Acting. It's acting. You got to be able to communicate one-on-one -on -one with people and, and make it believable. But the, the home studio piece of it is one that, and we're going to talk about this a little later, uh, where, you know, you don't want to sound bad, but in order to not sound bad, you need to be properly instructed on how to do it. And you can go into Facebook forums and listen to people who are real experts at, you know, one microphone, which is probably a USB microphone. Now, everybody's an expert. Nobody has built as many home studios as Mr. Whittem and myself. We've just been doing it longer. We know what it's about. We know what it's supposed to sound like. So 
if you want to learn from the guys that actually know what it's about and set the standards for what a home studio is supposed to sound like, we've actually done that. You can work with George by going over to... There you can head is. to George no, it's the dot tech. <laughs> there it is. Um, George the dot tech. Um, if you're, if you find that confusing because you're new to the internet, you can also go to George the tech.com. That also works. Um, but yeah, that's where all my tech stuff is. There's a menu on there with all sorts of options for services. Um, you can get a sound check if you're not sure about your sound quality. Um, you can get support for source connect and all sorts of other stuff. And uh, you can do some things that are scheduled and you can do some uh, what I call self-service services where you send your files and I send back the results and the information that you need. So that's a few ways to work with me. And Dan, you're also working online these days. Of course, aren't you? You're heading over to, to <laughs> yeah, Dan's website. Is homevoiceoverstudio.com. Home homevoiceoverstudio.com. 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 How can you forget that? it five times fast. That's yeah. right. Uh, yeah. So if you, if you go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, you will see, of course, my website talking about really what you need to do for having a, a good home voiceover studio. Also, uh, I do consultations with people, and I can teach you from the beginning to the end well, hopefully yeah, the end might be a little further down the road, but at least we can get you <laughs> up and running uh, so your sound competent and your sound will not be an issue when you are sending out auditions or if you're doing any production work. Uh, and one of the ways we can find out if you're doing what you're supposed to be is by clicking on my specimen collection cup at the bottom of my homepage, scroll all the way down there. And for $25, I will analyze your audio See if it's where it's supposed to be. And if it's way off, we can talk about consulting. If it's just this or that, uh, you know, you could, you're a little too close to the mic. We'll throw you at that and uh, we'll try mm -hmm. and get you sounding as good as you can. So check those out. So, yeah, we've been a little busy. Uh, it's like the phone doesn't stop ringing. The, the email inbox is completely overflowing and everybody's like, they're, they're trying to catch up there. There's a lot of us out here that have been ready to do this for the last 15 years. And now everybody's got to learn it overnight and you're not going to learn it overnight, but uh, we, we do the best we can and get you up to speed as fast as possible. So what do you got in your tech update this week, Mr. Widow? Yeah, most of the stuff isn't so directly related to audio. Um, it's more about some ways to enhance the way you do everything else. But I'll start off with the first thing that came across my radar in the last couple of days. And uh, I think it could be pretty darn useful. And it's called um, the Luna adapter. So what that thing does is it's a little USB dongle, thingamajig. Actually, it's not USB. I take it back. It looks like a USB uh, flash drive or a little device that plugs in, but it's not USB. It's actually mini display port. So what it does is this little guy plugs into the mini display port of your Mac. And now what it does is that sends out a video signal that using their app on your iPad can be viewed. In fact, it can be used on an iPad. It can be used on another Mac. And believe that it's also Windows compatible. So you can really use any other computer as a second monitor for your Mac. And why is that cool? Well, the reason I think that's pretty neat is it takes away some of the pain of having a second display hooked to your computer, or specifically in this case, your Mac, and really makes it easy to move that display away into another room, into a booth, into a closet. And why is that helpful? Because a lot of you are thinking, well, why don't I just use my laptop? I could just put my laptop in there, can't I? Well, the problem is, especially now, Computer fans are going like crazy because we're not just recording anymore, folks. Now we're doing Zoom and video chat. And anytime you get video chat mixed in there, the computer is doing a lot more heavy lifting. The processors are much busier. The graphics processing is churning away, which makes the computer hot, which makes the fan come on. And now you can't have your laptop near the mic. So this is a way to very easily get your laptop or your whatever that computer is that's noisy away from your microphone in another room 
and still be able to see what's going on. And beyond that, control it. So this thing is makes, makes like an iPad into a touchscreen for your Mac. So it's like having a touchscreen Mac, which is something that doesn't exist. Um, I really prefer this solution. And, and I, again, I'm basing this off of some research. I read a great article about this on iMore.com um, called How to Use Your iPad Pro Display with Your Mac Mini. Um, and it really explains uh, uh, how to make this device work and why it's superior to some of the other systems that are out there. Some people on Catalina might be familiar with something called Sidecar, which will make your iPad be a second screen. But again, it relies on having a Catalina system. Um, with this device, I think it's about 50 bucks for this little adapter. It will plug into any computer with mini display port. And they also have a USB-C version for all the new Macs. So um, it it's, it's works over many years of generations of computer and allows this to happen. I'm, I'm so excited about it. I bought the adapter and I bought an older iPad Air. You can buy the first gen iPad Air. I got one on eBay for like 150 bucks wow. shipped. And that becomes your second monitor. So I'm excited to try it out. It could be a really cool solution for this, this problem of getting that Mac out of the booth. So we'll see how that goes. Um, also other things that are, you know, bugging me right now, <laughs> um, <laughs> cause you've got lot of, lots of time to be bugged, I think, <laughs> yeah. mm. um, audient, uh, we're, we're big fans of the audient hardware over the years. I mean, I have recommended or used the audient series of products for a long time. ID four, ID 14, ID 22. Um, but there is a quirk and I've been wondering why this is the case. You've probably noticed having used these devices, if you do, that the gain control is a little, I don't know, quirky. Uh, I'll use that word again. You have to turn the gain up for voiceover work to probably nine out of 10 to get the gain to about where you want it to be. So almost all the way up. And so what happens is the last 10% of the turn of that knob is a pretty big jump in gain. So you find that the range of gain control that you might use is a, like a very small adjustment, very tiny. And that is obviously quite a bit, a little bit annoying. Now, what they did on the ID14 was add this plus 10 button. So that's a nice little fix, a little workaround. So if you're doing voiceover, turning on plus 10 to the gain might be helpful because now that gain knob may not have to be so high and you get a little more range of adjustment. But why did they do it this way? And they say they did it for sound quality. Um, in fact, I didn't know about this till actually Dan contacted them. And he got an answer from an engineer at Audient named Daniel Mills. He says, the gain taper is logarithmic, not linear. And so I was wondering, well, <laughs> why? You know, why do it differently than most other interfaces like the Scarlet, et cetera? And he says it just keeps the preamps more stable and provides better clarity. So it, their reason for that is quality of sound. Right. So the, you trade off a, an easier to use gain control for theoretically better sound quality overall. Hmm. Jury's out, whether it really matters, whether it really helps, I don't really know, but there's your answer. Because I've seen that come up on Facebook and um, people wondering what's the deal and that's why. It's, it's not a bug. It's it, it's a feature. Yeah, it, and it's and it's sitting in a box here while I try to figure that out. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm. So using, that's something to keep. Yeah, I, I I found that you know it's a, a little weak for voiceover. I mean, it sounds great, you know, even if you know if you if you're a little undermodulated, but you, and you can raise up the gain a little bit. Uh, but really, it was designed for music. It has a lot of headroom. Yeah, so it works really well recording at say 24 bit using more conservative gain. And, you know, it's a little annoying for voiceover because you end up with a very low signal coming into the computer. And if you're doing zoom or something, that means the level going into zoom is going to be low. Um, you know, it's, it, it's not ideal, ideal, you know, you can get good sound quality out of it, but it's a little more, a little bit more annoying. So keep that in mind. I would definitely check out the new Evo four from audience though. We did mention it on the show a while ago. We, we, we reviewed it. I reviewed it. Um, and that definitely changes that mindset. The gain control is much easier to set and the sound quality is still really, really quite good. So if you want to try something new from Audient, try that one out. 
Um, a few little things. Um, if you want to use your iPhone as a webcam, why would you do that, first of all? Um, you've probably noticed that the webcams built into your laptops, even including the MacBook Pro, are pretty mediocre to lousy. Um, they were darn good 10 years ago because <laughs> they were the first, some of the first ones on the Macs were coming out as uh, 720p webcams, which was pretty new 10 years ago. But we've definitely surpassed that quality big time in a lot of ways. So if you're looking for a better webcam, look no further than the one built into your iPhone. The, the cameras on the iPhone and the iPad blow away the cameras on the Mac. So if you're trying to get the best quality you can get into your computer for Zoom, Skype, and Dan's actually using his phone right now, that's the iPhone camera uh, being sent into our switch right now over something called NDI. But you're going to get an idea of how good that looks. And here's a little secret. I've been doing the show tonight on my iPhone. This is not my laptop. This is my iPhone. So the camera is really good on the iPhone. But if you need to get video directly from an iPhone into the Mac, and I believe, don't get me wrong, but I believe they also have drivers for Windows, um, Epic Cam, which is spelled E-P-O-C-C-A-M, is the tool to get. The app for the iPhone, I think it was like eight bucks. Um, I'm experimenting with it. I have not used it for a, a production environment yet. So tonight I'm actually running Zoom on my iPhone. So that's how I'm connecting to you guys. But uh, that um, that's a tool you can use to connect the two worlds together. It will pass video over Wi-Fi, but it's definitely best to use USB. Um, you'll get more smoother frame rate. So you can USB right into the computer. So there's a little, a little utility you guys can try out and use the best webcam you already have. Um, and lastly, a little, little thing that's been bugging me because I've been using it more lately is the MicPort Pro 2. If you're noticing that when you're monitoring on headphones, and yes, I know, you shouldn't always monitor yourself on headphones doing voiceover, but if you are wearing headphones more lately because of zooming and all that stuff, you might notice that the monitoring on the MicPort Pro while it's clean sounds a little strange. And you, you probably don't even think about this until you play back. And that's because it sounds to me like possibly the monitoring circuit is out of phase. What that means is the signal coming out of the mic into your headphones is 180 degrees out of phase. It's like a mirror image of your own voice, but reversed. And it's, it's hard to des describe this conceptually. You know it when you hear but, it. <laughs> but you know it when you hear it. So <laughs> when you listen to yourself in your headphones, record yourself, and then immediately play it back, all of a sudden you go, whoa, it sounds so rich and I can hear the full range of my voice. It sounds amazing. And right now what I'm hearing is not that. My voice has a thinness to it. Um, it doesn't have the full range. It sounds like there's a hole in the middle. That's uh, the phase problem I'm talking about. So I'm wondering if any of you guys have noticed this. Maybe my mic port pro, uh, which was sent to me as a, as a review unit. Maybe it was one of the early ones. And maybe this was just a fluke in mine. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from the guys at Centrance about it. But if you've got one, the MicPort Pro 2 specifically, try this little experiment. Record and listen back through your, both through your headphones. See if that happens to you. I'm curious if it's more than just mine. Anyway, oh. that's my bit. That's a lot of stuff, though. It's a lot of stuff. You, you spend a I lot of time on Amazon, don't you? And, I'm like, I do spend a lot of time on that. <laughs> Actually, the, the, that Luna thing is only sold through that company direct. I, I didn't see it on Amazon. So that's oh, an interesting cool. interesting product, but uh, curious to try it out. Right. So anyway, what are we talking about? What's our discussion? Well, we've got a couple of topics I wanted to throw out tonight um, because these are things that directly affect what you and I deal with on a daily basis, and that's dealing with people who are trying to get their their voiceover studio up and running or they're they have one up and running and they want to mm -hmm. upgrade uh so so the first thing we want to talk about was because there has been a lot of, uh, said about being able to record remotely which of course those of us that have been doing this for a while of course you got to be able to do it remotely however some of the edicts that have been coming down going, if you want to be hired, you've got to be able to record remotely. Does that mean that you should immediately go out and purchase this type of a system to record remotely, even though you may, it may take you a while to develop your, 
your voiceover practice to where you might actually need it. You can always tell people you've got Source Connect or IPDTL or one of these systems because they're very easy to get. But do you really need to have it to get work or do you work to get it? George? That's a good that's a good question. I mean, uh, maybe it's a little disingenuous to say you don't to say you have it when you don't, but I can say that it's a good idea to at least have initialized your license or created like a trial or a temp demo or something. Um, with IPDTL, that means you can sign up for an account, uh, purchase a um, uh, I think they have like a month to month type thing. So you could just pay for a first month and have it up and running and then let it, you know, lapse. Um, that means you have an account, you have a username, but when you need to use it again, you can reactivate it. So that's a little workaround that's com to me completely legit. Because that means you've set it up, you know it's working, you've gone through the process of learning how to use it, and you should anyway, you better have done that <laughs> before you have to use it. Um, and the same holds true for Source Connect. You can get the license trial. You guys have heard me say this on the ad for the, from our sponsorship over and over. But have it ready, but you don't have to spend all that money right now. Just be ready and understand how it works so that when you're called, it's called, when you're called upon to use it, you have it. But Dan, yeah. what do they do when the production says you need to sound broadcast quality? Anybody that's worked with me in the last couple of weeks that's thrown out that broadcast quality term usually gets an earful for me, which I suppose I should back off on a little. Broadcast. Well, it's being used a lot more now. So how, how do we define it for everybody so we can actually sort of use this term now? Well, yeah, because I personally, when people use it, I would usually throw that question back at them. Can you define it? Right. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is most people can't. Well, it sounds like it's right. broadcast. Yeah, well, broadcast quality to me is a term that it's probably about 40 years obsolete because it referred to uh, the audio quality of analog broadcasting in television and radio 25, 30, 40 years ago. If you go go on the Game Show Network and listen to the audio from something from the late 60s, and you'll realize that it's not anything like what is acceptable as professional quality audio today. Uh, digital, digital recording is completely different. So George and I would like to throw out there the next person who is going to be hung from a lamppost that says this should use this term instead, and that is professional quality audio, because it it, it encompasses a lot of different things. But people yeah. say broadcast quality. I'm sorry. It's like, hey, that doesn't mean anything to me. And clearly it doesn't mean anything to you, because if I asked you to define it, you wouldn't be able to. So, yeah. it's, Well, so I mean, now we're throwing out professional. What are some parameters to define that? Well, we know it's not sounding bad. Right. <laughs> we know it when we, we know it when we hear it, right? We we know <laughs> we we the thing is is we may not notice if it's broadcast quality, but we certainly don't know that we do notice when it's not. It's not professional. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are the things that we usually throw out there. What are the things that you've got to do right? Your acoustics have to be right. You can't have a very reflective room. Uh you, it has to be somewhat sound isolated trying to create a soundproof area is literally impossible in a home area there are some very very good vocal booths but they are a sure. significant investment mm -hmm. uh so you need to find a place that is very well isolated uh, a closet a walk-in closet with lots of clothes in it fabulous good place to start great place to start i've i've had some really professional quality audio coming out of a lot of people's closets. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people making good money next to their underwear and pants and shoes and socks and stuff. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's the first place you start is the acoustical signature of the room you record in. And you've got to know, is it reflective? What is too reflective? What is, you know, not too dead? Your voice can't be sucked into the walls. It's got to, it, it has to sound like you're having a conversation with somebody in a room. Second is your microphone technique. Microphone technique is, is key. If you watch the guys that have been doing animation and professional voiceover for years, they know how to work a mic. We had Pat Fraley on a couple of weeks ago, and he knows how to use a mic like nobody else. And these guys really understand it. You've got to understand the proximity of the mic. 
uh, and and how you can change your volume simply by how far away you are. You then you can talk louder, but you have to talk quieter when you get closer, and you end up learning what is the the right amount. So mic technique is very important, and as we like to say, mic technique is have the microphone upside down, primarily at the bridge of your nose, so your copy is underneath. And you can go, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers all day long, and you're not going to get any plosives, as opposed to talking directly into the diaphragm where you go, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, and you get plosives. I can't hear myself, but I know. Was that plosive, uh, George? I had this thing so processed, plosives, <laughs> and nobody could hardly notice. Anyway. But yeah, th there was a little bit of plosive. In okay, there. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got to avoid the plosives. Plosives are not broadcast quality. Although the stuff I've been hearing on the radio from some people and TV news, like, what the oh heck are gosh. you doing? It's been pretty bad. They're, they're letting some low quality stuff slide through lately. Right. Man, they sure are. So maybe that's what broadcast quality is. And the final thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The final thing has to do with. sample of, of some broadcaster <laughs> doing a commercial nowadays. You know, it says, is this, is this broadcast quality? I heard this on the radio. <laughs> Absolutely. The last thing is setting levels. And we're going to talk about that in just a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. We'd still love your questions. Throw them in the chat room. We'll be right back. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to VoiceOver Body Shop, VOBS.TV. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign. It's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here. And a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording. Blue, playing back. Green, it's a wrap. Plug in the seven-foot-long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. For voice workers, silence really is golden. And gold is one of the 20 colors you can choose from. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Hey, everybody. It's time to talk about Source Connect. That's that software you've probably heard about created by Source Elements, and it's used for connecting your studio to other studios and producers and engineers all around the world, and now especially at home. Um, a lot of studio engineers are now recording sessions live, and not just what you might normally think of as Source Connect sessions like big uh, commercial gigs, but they're doing even audiobooks. Uh, they're doing animation. All sorts of different projects are being recorded over Source Connect. It's a software you run on your computer. It's an application that runs on Mac or Windows. And uh, in order to use it, there's a little bit of a process to get it set up. If you head over to georgethe.tech sc, you can get some free tutorial information over there to get you up and running a little bit faster um, that I've put together. But get a trial license of Source 
connect now. Uh, not source connect now, and that's why I said that. It's a play on words. Source connect standard. Source connect standard is the tool that's being used by the pros. So if you want to get that up and running, head over to source-elements.com. Get a 15-day free trial. Get your iLock set up and get it going so that you're ready and you can tell your agent and you can tell your clients, I am Source Connect ready. I'm ready to go. And that's what you should do. You should be ready. Be ready and make sure you have Source Connect. We'll be right back. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back on VoiceOver Body Shop. We got a lot of questions. We love getting questions. This is what makes this yes, show interesting. Yeah. I mean, we ask our own questions, but we love your questions. And the first one we had tonight is from a new viewer and a donor, by the way. Uh, Dominic Carlos, he says, hello, Dan and George. I have often heard of terminology being used to describe booth sounds and microphones like boomy, bright, muddy, and dead. I have an idea in my head what that sounds like, but I was wondering if you had any examples or if there are any good past videos to watch that would give me a better understanding. Well, knowing that you were going to ask this question, George and I have set up a little demonstration here. Uh, to give an example of how, how, a micro, how different microphones might sound. Generally, most studio condenser microphones have a frequency range from 20 hertz to 20,000 know, uh, hertz or 20 kilohertz. Yeah. And yeah. there's little variations on them. What's going to make a mic sound muddy might be something different than what you think. But let's, let's run through some of these scenarios and, 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 show you what these different things sound like. So where do we start? Well, let's maybe let's see if we can try boomy first. So, okay. So I, what I just did is um, to simulate boomy, I turned up a huge amount of gain on my EQ uh, at about 90 Hertz for your mic. So okay. Dan, let's see what that sounds like. Okay. This is, this is what a boomy mic would sound like. And uh, yeah, as you can hear, not broadcast quality, unless you're, you know, you're, trying to be, you know, in a basement somewhere, I guess. I know you don't really hear it, Dan, but I definitely get in my headphones this very ponderously thick, heavy sound. Yeah. And it actually sounds like right now, you're like you're inside, inside some kind of small closet or whisper room or something. Wow. Because it's got that boomy sound. Yeah. All right. What's next? So that's boomy. That's boomy. Um, now let's, let's change it to muddy. Muddy. So let's try it. <laughs> so this is more like what muddy would sound like. All right. So yeah, what is what is meant by muddy? Well, this is a this is a sound that is kind of muddy. Now, is a microphone going to sound muddy? It probably has more to do with the environment than the microphone Definitely. itself. Absolutely. Muddiness is very much a result of the environment um, not being set, not being acoustically tuned well. So that's a real common one. Yeah. And then um, bright. Bright. Let's boost twelve dB at. Oh, well, let's try 8,000 hertz. Oh. So now we're going to boost 12 dB at 8,000. Sort of like I'm on AM radio. All right. Hey, what's the traffic today here on KFI? You know, that sort of thing. So we, we've added 12, uh, 12 dB of boost a lot at around 8,000 hertz. So that's that bright, very edgy, sibilant tone we, what we're referring to when we talk about bright. Yeah. Um, so dead is a little harder to emulate in a room because you have to actually, you really do have to change the acoustics of the room to get an actual dead sound. So that's not going to be quite as easy, but dead is referring to how reverberant the room is. And right. for voiceover, we want it to be pretty darn dead. We don't want there to be much ringing and resonance in the room, which, how do you describe it? It's kind of like talking inside. I mean, the best way to describe it is to walk into a closet. Right. Go in and just talk with your eyes closed and listen what that sounds like. Yeah. The way your voice just gets sucked out of your face. <laughs> um, you know, that's dead. Or standing in a completely open field, like a meadow. Really? No trees, nothing to reflect sound, just an open space. That's that's pretty dead too. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's another way in to do it. Interesting. Shoveling your driveway in a snowstorm also shows what dead is. Yeah. Your voice Don't you nowhere. love it? 
that's the one thing you miss about snow, right? Is that that's sound the only thing. Sounds like <laughs> the only thing is when you go outside when it's been snowing and there's a foot of snow and everything just is so quiet yeah. and damped. It's a huge acoustical blanket on yeah. the whole world. It's Absolutely. Really cool. Absolutely. So thanks for that question, uh, Dominic. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Never been asked on the show. No. I never remembered that one. That's we, a good one. We love it. And that's going to sound great on the podcast. Uh, Chris Duke asks, talk about the proper gain level that you should set on your USB interface. I use a Scarlett 2i2. I just happen to have one here. Um, what a quinky dink. Yes. Uh, how far should you crank up the output level on hardware interface based on the DB levels you see in your DAW to obtain the cleanest audio with the lowest amount of room noise. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's... Okay. Well, that's, it's, it's a lot easier than it sounds. Uh, yeah. Let me yeah. throw on the NDI camera here and you can see. Unfortunately, the NDI camera is reversed here, but here's working though. Yeah. Here's the gain knob right here for a channel. It's one. hard to do that, isn't it? Yeah. It's it very is. hard to point in the right place. Yeah. Sort of like hearing your voice twice, but you yeah. want, you know, th this is, this is 10 and this is zero all the way over here. A lot of people say it's really quiet. Cause I've got it set. I like using the clock face analogy. Me too. Yeah. Uh, it's at 12 o'clock. All right. Well, maybe it's at one fifteen. The best place on most interfaces is usually at about 75 to 80%. And we were talking about the, the audience earlier where it's got to be even a little hotter than that. So you, right. you want to be peaking. You don't want to be like underneath nine DB on the scale. You want to be peaking upwards of minus six to minus four with an occasional jump to three. If you're getting a little bit more boisterous, and this uh, is for conversation, conversational, speech. right? Right. Normal speech, right? If you are getting louder, you have a couple of options, especially if you're doing you know, video games or something. You can turn away from the mic because we don't yell in people's ears. We usually are farther away when we yell and you learn the right proximity as we were talking earlier. Or you turn the volume way down to about noon or maybe a little quieter. And if you're going to do loud sections, record those separately and edit those in to your takes later on. So you, at least you are at a consistent level set for that mic and you can do all the louder sections that way. That makes sense. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds good to me. So, um, let's move on to moose. Yes. Uh, moose has I should keep it to like one question per person for, for now, because we got so many coming in. Right. Um, a couple of questions. Let's see. This one's talking about, um, <laughs> there was the bird noise from last week, but oh, okay. We, well, we this, appreciate well, that. I, this is actually <laughs> well. I think I, I like to mention this. Um, he said for dealing with bird noise outside your studio, I recommend an owl or bird of prey dummy. You've probably seen them on buildings sometimes. All the time. Um, yeah. Just set these on the roof outside your studio, and just the presence of these dummy birds um, scares off the all the other birds. That's freaking brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, I think, um, I think you that, lost your mic uh, up there, George. Question then. So you mentioned 120 hertz hum from just regular home electricity current. Um, I have my gear plugged into a power conditioner. In this case, it's a Monster Power Pro 3500. Um, will this negate that hum? Um, Good heart. That hum is is hard to deal with. It's hard to it's hard to say because that hum sometimes isn't coming literally through your wire. It's coming through your building. It's the whole, it's all the machinery in the whole apartment building or the condo all resonating in harmony with each other at 120 Hertz. That's more likely the hum you're going to pick up in your studio on your mic. It's a lot less common to have actual ground hum or electrical hum coming through the wire. If the ground hum is coming literally through your power lines, then yeah, a power conditioner can help. Your mileage may vary. You always got to try these things out. It may not do a dang thing. Yeah. So and it, uh, you might have to try it. I don't know. Yeah. You can see it on a spectrogram. It's like right there at 120. Well, that usually is an indication of where it's coming from, sort of. Then you've got to find the source of where it's coming from. We know it's one of these things or one of the other. A lot of times you get hums. We see a lot of that kind of stuff 
it's usually just bad wires, you know, bad XLR cables, uh, usually not USB. USB goes bad. It just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. But, but with, with a, uh, with a mic cable, with an XLR cable where you've got, you know, a, a two phase thing, it's going to, it will cause problems if there's a loose connection there. So, uh, exactly. yeah. Uh, by the way, I think you changed your mic input, George, because you sound much farther away. Yeah. Do I, do I, did it come back or is it still thin? It's still, see, now that's thin. <laughs> Cause I, I lost connection connectivity to my uh, mic port pro there right in the middle. Ah. Let me replug and see what happens. Oh, okay. Let's see what happens. When that... Okay. And, and I'm hoping that it just automatically. Re- well, <laughs> We can't tell right now. It looks, sounds, sounds like it's switching on. Sounds over. the same? Yeah, that's okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Not quite as deep as it was before, but. Bummer. All right, well, I'm going to get closer to the mic because the mic is now my iPhone. Okay, well, there you go. Um, <laughs> working portably, not always the best. Yeah. Um, Douglas, voice guy, tech talk question. What are the most cost-effective materials to make a window plug? Okay, number one, <laughs> drywall. That's definitely the cheapest thing to use to fill a window is with drywall. Yeah. If they're building houses, yeah. If they're, yeah. If they're building houses in your neighborhood, there's usually probably some in a dumpster. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Drywall is very inexpensive, very, very heavy and thick. And, uh, it's very effective at creating a window plug. So that'd be the first place I would start. And it's super easy to trim it and readjust the size, Right. trim it. So it's a little bit too big at first and then just take off a little of the overage you need. Yeah. Would you put a rubber seal on the outside of it to uh, make it hold in place? You can. Yeah, that would, I mean, it's not easy to get it to fit just right with a rubber seal. It's definitely, it's definitely a little bit hard to build. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend a seal for sure. It would really be a good idea yeah. to have some kind of a gasket. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Holman asks, he says, you alerted to it earlier last week on home visit, but are you still doing on-site consultations? Not at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I, I am not right now. I I, uh, I might resume soon with some of my really, honestly, VIP clients. Um, but no, at this point, we're still doing 100% remote. And I would say it's 100% effective. Yeah. So, you know. You know, as long as we, because a lot of what we do is listening as opposed to physically, you know, manipulating things. And it's like, you know, turn your microphone upside down. Or my, my favorite, turn your microphone around. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. a lot of it's a lot of it's that and a lot of it's software stuff. Right. So obviously the majority of that stuff we can help you with remotely quite easily. No question. So we'll see. We'll see. We're kind of waiting like everybody else to see when it really makes sense to be uh in, in strangers' homes. So. Right. All right. Now which Jeff Kennedy question are we gonna go for here? Uh, let's go with, um, let's see. He was referring to some of the stuff you were talking about earlier about. Oh, okay. Referring to camera. Let's see. When George is talking about using your phone. Oh, uh, using the iPhone as a webcam. Um, I think it is a higher quality than the one typically used with Skype. I'm not really sure. I, I mean, it depends what you're doing. Like a Skype camera like a, like the one built in the computer can look fine for Skype quality. Right. Um, if you're doing something that one, you want to put up online and share publicly or join into a forum or something that you're going to be putting on YouTube over zoom or over Skype, then having a better camera can really make the difference. If you're just doing sketch chat with family or doing a business meeting, maybe not that big a deal, but eh, you know, again, it's a niche thing. It's not something that affects most voice actors, but it was something I wanted to, to touch on. And no, we are not recommending anybody at all use anything with Linux <laughs> no, or Linux. Linux, yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, he was also asking about, uh, you know, if you turn up, uh, when you were talking about the audience, that if you turn it up too high, it'll clip. Well, that's when you yeah. learn how to be a voice actor and how to modulate your voice. And if you are getting really loud and every other word... If you're peaky. You're, yeah. If you're peaky, that's not the microphone. It has a lot more to yeah. do with your microphone technique, technique and your vocal yeah. technique. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, oh, front versus rear cameras on the iPhone. I find that any modern iPhone 10, 10s, 11, blah blah blah. The front facing cameras are pretty damn good. They're still much better than the laptop. Obviously, the cameras on the back are probably the best, but 
I'm using my front facing camera tonight on Zoom and uh, I'm using a light, 10, a $20 selfie light yeah. that you can get on Amazon. One of those influencer lights that you see all the makeup girls do it, you know, right. um, and uh, you can do it very easily. Yeah. And, and I shot the, uh, the voiceover essentials commercial with the rear camera or the front camera on my the front uh, camera my, on my, my iPhone today. Yeah. It yeah. looks great. Okay. Let's see Marie here. Scott? Mari Scott, go ahead, go with it. Interfaces. Yeah. What interfaces do you recommend? I have a focus, right? But have constant issues with it popping. Don't really know what that means. You might want to uh, take it out of the microwave. <laughs> um, <laughs> I bought another one and I'm having the same issues. I was looking at the audience today. Are there any others you'd recommend? Um, well, yeah, we've recommended a lot of them. Right now, it's just kind of getting, it's kind of getting hard to get certain ones. Right. Um, certain vendors are just not stocking certain things. So that's getting a little hard. So yeah. you might be more limited to what's available on Sweetwater or uh, voiceoveressentials.com or Amazon, that kind of thing. Yeah. If, um, if he's talking, uh, yeah, if he's talking about popping though, I mean, if he's talking about plosives, that's got nothing yeah. to do with your interface. Yeah. I, what I, kind of popping are we talking about? Yeah. I mean, we'd love popping. some clarification on that because. Is that a clicking or a digital dropping out? Jeff might type in some more clarity there. Okay. It looks like he, he, he is. If, uh, he's saying, okay, right. Okay. He's having the same issue on two different. So it's not the interface. Yeah. It's not like the mic interface. It's my technique, my friend. It probably is. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, we do like the Focus Light Scar the Focus Right Scarlet series. Very good. Very rarely have any issues. Um, they're up to the Gen three models. Those are nice. Steinberg's UR series, the twelve, the twenty two. They're fantastic. Um, the Micport Pro two um, is a really, really super high quality for its size. Um, it's portable. Yeah. Um, the Evo four we reviewed on our show. I haven't used it long term because you gave it to me. Because <laughs> it's brand new, yeah, it's very new, and we haven't had it that long. Um, but this one's new to the market. Uh, these are some of the ones that we've been recommending pretty regularly. Yeah, they're they're all they're. It's all a matter of features versus the quality of sound coming out of these. Any one of these interfaces that are generally over a hundred to hundred fifty dollars, like most microphones, are generally fine. The you know yeah. they've got a lot Especially of clean gain and. Mics. Yeah. Yeah. Condenser mics have a lot of output and they can be driven uh, properly with most interfaces these days. Right. Uh, J. Horace Brax Black says, where can we get the USB thingy you mentioned? The thingy. So if it's the thing I mentioned, meaning the video thing, then it's the Luna. Uh, I'll find you the link to their website. I can't remember. Luna. Uh, Luna Display. LunaDisplay.com. If that's the USB thingy you're referring to, because we talk about a lot of USB thingies on this show, then that's where you find it. Um, currently, I have a Mac Mini audio interface, a Mac Mini and Apollo interface, two monitors that are 4K. Woo, touch you, man. Um, uh, one on my desk and the other one goes in my booth. And I just realized that my 4K monitor in my booth is only utilizing HD quality. Is there something simple I can get that will allow me to get the full 4K resolution out of the monitor in my booth um, using the right cables, for example? Um, if you're not using an, a 4K uh, HDMI cable, um, it has to be like HDMI 2.0. Yes, there are versions of cables. Um, it won't. It won't give you 4K. So that might be um, that might be what your problem is. Um, Dominic Carlos says, thank you for the examples. You're welcome. All right. Um, another statement from Jay Harris Black. Let's see if we can get to that. Let's make sure we got to all the actual questions before we wrap it up. Yeah. Um, do you see anything else? Uh, um, Morris Maurice says it's, uh, it's a, it's when I turn on the focus, right? It makes a loud pop. That sounds like an electrical issue and then it continues. Yeah, that definitely is concerning. Have yeah. you contacted Focusrite by chance? Yeah, they they, they generally are. Contact Focusrite. Yeah, that, <laughs> that sounds like it. Well, of course, if it's doing it on two different interfaces, that's, that's something it, different. Yeah. There could be a USB port issue on your computer. Try, diff also could try a different port, yeah. Yeah, change to a different port and try a different computer. Right. 
Um, lastly, from Jay Harris, that uh, statement, I had my first Source Connect directed session today. It went really well. I did the mount the month to month, not mouth to mouth. I did the, it's time to it's time to wrap the show. Um, I did the month to month just to see if it would, I could book something that would be um, that would actually pay for it. In less than a month of today's booking, um, goal accomplished. Now, a note that I'm already a working actor. Um, in the past, I would have to drive to Chicago Studio, which is three hours one way, to get work done, um, plus parking, tolls, time, etc. Um, I did Source Connect certification also, which was more than worth it to me. I have to say it was very nice to work with them and they were really helpful. Um, so by the, by the way, so certification, I always forget to mention this, yeah. um, but when you get Source Connect, you can also get certified. Um, what that does is for, for 75 bucks, they walk through it with you. They make sure you actually know how to use it. They make sure your system is set up correctly, network, port mapping, all these things. And they give you a little extra little badge next to your name, a little red C meaning you are certified. That could help you possibly book more gigs, maybe. Um, people would see that your studio definitely is ready for Source Connect. Um, so that's something else you can look into on Source Elements uh, website is certification. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. But yeah, but Jay is a working voice actor and would normally get hired to do stuff. And now that he has Source Connect, it's working for him. Which is cool. Yep. Got one last question here from uh, from Nathan Carlson. Oh yeah, yeah. I, and this is a really easy question. What is your dream Apple product for video and audio production? What's fast and costs less than a car? Uh, <laughs> I, so not the Mac Pro, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, if it's if you're talking about video production, I mean, it this thing is powerful enough to do an awful lot of stuff, my friend. It, it it can it really can. Uh, it's not that you would, but uh, yeah, for big but you production, can. Yeah, it, a five minute web video or something. Absolutely, man. I've made some damn good looking videos on an iPhone. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I mean, I'm using a Mac Pro 2018, the top, the fastest one. It's a core. What is it? Core i7, six core, blah blah blah. For what are they? Twelve hundred bucks or fifteen hundred right. bucks? Um. It's fine. It doesn't export video at rocket speed but it does everything else absolutely fine. It, everything I've tried, it's never hiccups. Um, where, you, where you spend the real money is for the fastest uh, processing for exporting videos. So when you're doing a lot of fast turnaround for television and you know for production, you really need the horsepower then. Yeah. But honestly, the MacBook, the Mac mini nowadays, any of the i7, iMacs, uh, the iMac Pro is insane. <laughs> super expensive but it's really good yeah um you know you, yeah it's it's it really just nathan depends on how much production you need to do what resolution you're shooting in um if you're shooting everything in 4k you want a hot you want a fast i7 uh, processor mac you know so yeah dream computer certainly the mac pro yeah. of course yeah but my mac mini Starting does a great job brand. with video production just using you know it so, does. you know uh, st uh stream flow or Whatever it's mm -hmm. called. Screenflow. Yeah. Screenflow. iMovie. Yeah. I use both. Screen movie. I use iMovie and I use There's lots of I lots use. of software out there. And some of them are simpler than others, just like, you know, with uh, with digital audio workstations. It's uh, you know, it's a workflow that you want. You know, Adobe Premiere works great on my make my Mac Mini. And it works great on a PC. Of course, we have our PC is a beast. It is a beast. I can actually hear it I growling seven. back there. In the other room, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Boy, we Question got through all of them. Over. All right. We love answering your questions. You can, you know, you can pre-send them to us at theguys at vobs.tv. And uh, we'll be happy to get the, your questions on. We love hearing from you. We want to answer your questions. We also want to work with you and make sure that your your home studios are working right. And that's what George and I do professionally. Uh, and uh, that's going to do it for your questions. So we'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away. You want to listen to these. And then George and I will wrap things up right after them. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. 
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, hey there, Hero. We interrupt the award-winning shenanigans of VoiceOver Body Shop for this public service announcement. 1.5 billion. That's how many students there are in the world. Primary, secondary, college, university. 1.5 billion. And that's how many were sent home several weeks ago, along with the 90 million teachers and professors who teach them. And as they left, those teachers and professors were all told by their principals and deans, hey, keep teaching your classes from home, okay? Yeah, you know how to do that, what, that Facebook Live thing and that YouTube and that Zoom thing? You know how to do that, don't you? Sure, everybody does, except many of those teachers don't even know where to start. What camera to use, what microphone to use, how to set up lights, how to use Zoom, and what makes online classes different from in-person classes. But I do. I know how to do that. I've been doing that for years, and I thought, well, maybe I can help. So I spent day and night for the past few weeks putting together a course on how teachers can do all that. And I figured, uh, you know what, I'll sell it for 49 bucks. Anybody can afford 49 bucks, right? But then, at the last minute, I decided to do something different. I decided to set aside the money and give it away for free. So now through May 6th, any teacher can have the course forever for free. And I've got a favor to ask of you. If you're a teacher, or if you know a teacher or two, and with 90 million in the world who doesn't know a teacher or two, would you let them know about this? The course is available at teachyourcourseonline.com. And I'm going to ask Dan and George to make that link available on the VOBS website and maybe mention it a time or two on the air and in the notices that they sent out. Would you guys do that for me? Okay, great. The course again is at teachyourcourseonline.com. Help me help teachers be heroes at home as well as in the classroom. That's teachyourcourseonline.com. Thank you very much. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm gonna go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. More information you could possibly digest, but we digest it every week and throw it back at you and make sure that you understand how to run your home studio. Uh, who are oh, next week, by the way, uh, next week is Memorial Day. So we will we'll have a repeat on that you're going to want to watch. I'll find the best tech talk we can. And then in two weeks, 
we have Carolyn Casey, who is a, excellent, uh, who is a producer and uh, sounds like somebody after our own heart who really understands, you know, the production end of things. And that should be very interesting in talking with her. And a voice actor herself. And so she actor. really gets it from both sides. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Who are our donors this week? And we appreciate donors. Them. We have uh, Shauna Pennington Baird, Lee Penny. Hey, Lee. Hey, Don Lee. Griffith, Martha, Martha Kahn. Sorry, Martha. Um, <laughs> Dominic Carlos, Craig Goolsby, Pat Kennedy, Michael Kearns, and Christy Burns. All Thank right. you, everybody. All right. Hey, you can still show us your booths. Eventually, we'll get everyone will be back here. We need one. George and Sue and I need a group hug. We've been apart way too long, but we're getting the show done. I mean, it's look at this marvelous set we have. Um, we need to thank our sponsors as well, such as Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Soros Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All righty. And the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live and Recorded Webcasting. Uh, Jeff Holman uh, for his great work in the chat room, getting all those yeah. questions out there. Appreciate it, Jeff. Thanks, uh, Jeff. Sue Morlino, getting it done from Burbank, not from here. And uh, no. Lee Penny, yeah, for being Lee Penny. We love you, Lee. All righty. That's going to do it for us this week. We'll be back. We're always on. You can watch us on Facebook anytime. We're on our website. We're there. Every show we've ever done is there, which is getting upwards of what, seven, 800 episodes now? Probably... Type in any search string and VOBS and you'll find an answer All on right. YouTube. Excellent. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Have yourself a great Memorial Day and hopefully we'll be able to escape our compound sooner or later. Uh, but we're here to help you with your home studio. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shop or VO BS Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk. See you next. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.